With doubtnet, get instant video solutions to all your maths, physics, chemistry, and biology doubts. Just click the image of the question, crop the question, and get instant video solution. Download doubtnet app today. Hello, students. Let's start the question. Among the following, correct statement is. So we would be going through each and every statement, and then discussing it there itself, and hence predicting it whether it is true or false. Yeah. So here goes the first statement. The soles of the metal sulfides are lyophilic. Now, the very first case. Which are the soles of metal sulfides? Can we have any examples? Yes, of course. We can have examples like arsenic sulfide. This is one of the best examples which we have in our reference books also. Yes. So we have metallic sulfides like arsenic sulfide, or we could have any other metallic uh, metallic salts also like uh, FeOH trice that's iron hydroxide yes so metal metal sulfide salts are not lyophilic they are lyophobic in nature okay so that means they have a fear or other ways they do not have an affinity towards the solvent huh? so such lyophobic salts are the ones in which the colloidal system would be containing the uh, the particles of the dispersed phase where they would be having a very little or no interaction with the dispersion medium yes little or no interaction with the dispersion medium in short with the solvent yeah the metallic sulfide particles would be the dispersed phase particles yes I hope you understood that. Yeah. So the first statement is absolutely wrong. The soles of the metal sulfides would be lyophobic. Yes. Now let us go in for the second statement. The second statement says that the Brownian movement is more pronounced for smaller particles than for bigger ones. Okay, fine. Now, what about the Brownian motion or the Brownian movement? The Brownian movement arises due to the impact of the molecules due to the impact of the molecules yes of the dispersion medium let me write uh, abbreviate dispersion medium as dm yes with the colloidal particles yes with the colloidal particles okay so what i mean by impact it's the collision of course yes so the collision which occurs yeah and in that case it would always be more pronounced for smaller particles okay there's a reason behind this of course let me just complete the statement okay now, why smaller particles? Because more the, or otherwise I would say lesser the size of the particles, more would be the speed gained by them. Yes. So in short, we can say that the speed of the moving particles, yes, the speed of the moving particles will be inversely proportional to the size of the particles. Yes. So in short, it indicates smaller the size, more would be the speed and hence Brownian motion would be more pronounced for smaller particles. That would be our correct statement, right? So I would say option number two is absolutely correct. Now let us analyze the other statements. The third statement says that, let me put it up over here, that one would expect charcoal to adsorb chlorine more than hydrogen sulfide. This is absolutely incorrect. Okay. In fact, charcoal would adsorb hydrogen. Oh, sorry, I misspelled the adsorb word. Yeah. So it would adsorb hydrogen sulfide to a larger extent. Okay. As compared to chlorine. Now, why is it so? Because hydrogen sulfide tends to be 
an easily liquefiable gas. Yes, what is it? Easily liquefiable gas as compared to chlorine. Yes, and whenever we talk about an easily liquefiable gas, these gases would be readily absorbed. Yes, now the reason behind this is they are having a higher critical temperature, okay, which is indicated as Tc, as well as they have strong van der Waal forces of attraction. What is it? Strong van der Waal forces of attraction due to which they bind well and hence adsorption is going to be more. Yeah. So again, I would say that the third statement also went in as an incorrect option. Okay. Now, what about the fourth one? The fourth one says that the hardy schulz law states that bigger the size of the ion, greater is its coagulating power. Now, first of all, what is this hardy schulz law? I hope you remember it. Yes. So that was from the surface chemistry part, the colloidal chemistry, I would say, to be very specific. The hardy schulz law or the rule gives us an idea of the amount of the electrolyte which would be required to coagulate a colloidal solution. Okay, so there are many factors upon which this coagulation depends. Yes, so for instance, we can say that if at all we were considering the charge, the valency part, yes, so you would always say that greater the valency, more would be the coagulation. Okay, so similarly, in that case, we can say that smaller the size, more would be the coagulation. Yes, or otherwise, if at all we want to talk about the bigger factors, yes, more will be the coagulation. Yes, so bigger factors means we would be speaking about the bigger charge, yes, the greater valency. Okay, so that would definitely bring in more coagulation. So again, the fourth statement is also an incorrect. So we have only one statement which is correct and that is about the Brownian moment which is reflecting in option number two. I hope you understood the explanation. Thank you. For class 6 to 12, ITG and NEET level. Trusted by more than 5 crore students. Download Doubt and App today.